In the last lecture, we talked about Taylor versus Caldwell and the doctrine of impossibility, where performance is excused because the duty can no longer be physically performed. Today we'll learn about a related doctrine, the doctrine of frustration of purpose, where performance is excused even if performance is physically possible because the buyer's purpose for which the promise was originally entered into is no longer attainable. We do this by looking at a 1903 English case called Krell versus Henry. In Krell, the plaintiff Krell owned an apartment from which the coronation pre procession of King Edward VII was visible. The defendant, Henry, contracted to rent the apartment from Krell on the day of the procession and paid a 25-pound deposit. However, the king fell ill and the coronation was pos postponed. Henry refused to pay the remaining balance and, uh, uh, of the contracted rent, which was 50 pounds. Krell sued for this remaining balance and Henry countersued for the original deposit back. The trial court found for the defendant, Henry. The instant court affirmed with regard to the remaining balance and it did not decide the counterclaim, which was withdrawn by Henry. The central issue is this. Was the coronation an implied condition precedent for the rental contract? And the court answered yes. The court held that the postponement of the coronation defeated the understood purpose of the contract, which was to license the flat and an enhanced rent for the purpose of viewing the coronation. The court began by referencing the doctrine of impossibility by quoting Taylor versus Caldwell where the court said that if the parties understand that the completion of a contract requires the continued existence of some particular specified thing, then the contract is not to be considered a positive contract, but as subject to an implied condition that the parties shall be excused in case uh, before breach performance becomes impossible from the perishing of the thing. So does the doctrine of impossibility excuse defendant from paying the balance of the rent in Krell versus Henry? The answer is no. The defendant contracted to rent an apartment from plaintiff. Though the royal procession was canceled, this did not make performance impossible. The plaintiff was still physically able to supply the room that the defendant contracted to rent and, uh, and the defendant could still pay. This, however, did not stop the court. The court held that the principle underlying Taylor versus Caldwell is not limited to, quote, cases in which the event causing the impossibility of performance is the destruction or non-existence of some thing which is the subject matter of the contract or of some condition or state of things expressly specified as a condition of it. The court expanded the principle to the underlying purpose of the contract saying that one must first ascertain the substance of the contract and then ask whether the contract needs for its foundation the assumption of the existence of, of a particular state of things. The court concluded that the use of the rooms was let and taken for the purpose of seeing the royal possession. That purpose was frustrated by the postponement and therefore the defendant's breach was excused. The reasoning relied upon by the court in Krell v. Henry has come to be known as the Frustration of Purpose Doctrine. Section 265 of the Restatement describes the doctrine as follows. Where, after a contract is made, a party's principal purpose is substantially frustrated, without his fault, by the occurrence of an event, the non-occurrence of which was a basic assumption on which the contract was made, his remaining duties to render performance are discharged unless the language of the circumstances indicate the contrary. In another famous but much older English case, the court treated frustration of purpose very differently. In Paradigm v. Jane, decided in 1647, the defendant rented land from the plaintiff. However, Prince Rupert of Germany invaded and took the land for three years during the English Civil War and the defendant did not pay rent during that time. The plaintiff sued for the rent owed, but the defendant claimed that he owed nothing because the invasion had frustrated his purpose in renting the land, which 
pr the purpose was to uh, possession. The court held that the defendant was not excused from paying the rent. Among other reasons, the court reasoned that, quote, as the lessee is to have the advantage of casual profits, so he must run the hazard of casual losses, unquote. In other words, if the plaintiff is able to retain the unexpected benefits from renting the land, such as a bumper harvest, the plaintiff should also bear the unexpected losses. How would the court in Krell versus Henry respond to this policy argument? For example, what would happen if instead of the coronation, Adele decided to give a free concert underneath the balcony on the day that Henry rented the apartment? The leasehold might be worth more under this circumstance, but the lessee wouldn't have to pay more. In Krell versus Henry, Henry paid a 25 dollar a uh, 25 pound deposit in advance and counterclaimed for its return. The lower court held that Henry was entitled to the return of his deposit, but Henry withdrew this counterclaim on appeal, perhaps to bolster his case by rep representing the deposit as part of liquidated damages forfeited on his breach. So the King's Bench did not have to review the trial court's holding uh, on appeal about the return of the deposit. But in other coronation cases, the plaintiffs sought and were denied restitution of their, of their down payments. The gains and losses were left where the, they lay at the time of the frustration. Impracticability is about increases in sellers' costs of performing promises, whereas frustration is centrally about decreases in buyers' benefits. When unexpected events occur that either increase a seller's cost or decrease a buyer's benefit, courts sometimes discharge the party's duty to perform. But doctrines are, both doctrines are ways that courts make promises that seem unconditional on their face to be conditioned uh, by default on the seller's performance not becoming impracticable or the buyer's benefit from performance not being frustrated. By discharging performance when these bad news events occur, these doctrines spread the risk of the bad news between the two contractors. In Taylor, it would be adding insult to injury for the law to force the landlord to pay damages on top of losing his music hall to fire. The reluctance to have landlords in Krell disgorge the rent deposit might be a rough way to spread risk of the bad news of coronation delay uh, between the landlord and the tenant. By the way, the law treats opportunity costs very differently than costs. A seller who faces dramatically higher opportunity costs of performance will not have her promise discharge. Imagine that Rockefeller had offered to pay the landlord $1 million to rent the apartment for the coronation, the landlord's opportunity cost of renting to the initial renter would be dramatically higher because of Rockefeller's offer. But the landlord would be liable for damages if he breached. Enforcing the contract in response to good news of a competitive offer is a way of spreading the good news risk by encouraging landlords to compensate the previous tenant for being displaced. The doctrines of frustration and impracticability may be circumstances where the law is driven as much by conceptions of equity as conceptions of efficiency. Let's recap. Today, we learned about the frustration of purpose doctrine. According to the frustration of purchase doc purpose doctrine, non-performance of a contract may be excused if the purpose for which the parties entered into the contract is frustrated by an event that was not contemplated by the parties at the time of the contract.